Hey Internet, it's your old friend Dominic here with the All American Casino Guide, a channel dedicated to providing you with all the tips, tricks, tutorials, and trivia you're going to want to know about casinos and casino games. Go ahead and check out the channel. We already have a bunch of great content uploaded there. And while you're at it, make sure to subscribe to the channel, because it's your only way to confirm that you're not going to miss any of the other great material we've yet to put up. Players that are familiar with the rules of Texas Hold'em will find the rules of seven card stud approachable. While different games inherently, there are some similarities that can be drawn. The similarities that I find is that there are cards that you have visible to the rest of the table that they can know can be part of your hand. The difference is in a game of seven card stud, there is no community pool that all players draw from. Instead, what you have is you have five cards dealt to you face down over the course of several rounds of betting and two cards that are face up that everyone can see are part of your hand. What's important to remember though is even though you are dealt seven cards by the end of the betting rounds, you have to construct your hand from the best five cards that you have. Another important detail to point out is that in any particular game of seven card stud, the betting rules may vary from one table to the next, but to typically there is a uh, pot limit on any particular hand of seven card stud, and you need to be aware of that limit going in so that you don't make a mistake at the table. If you have any confusion, make sure to ask the rules directly from the dealer themselves. They'll be happy to help you. A very big difference between Texas Hold'em and Seven Card Stud is the initial betting structure. Seven Card Stud does not have the big blind, small blind, compulsory betting structure uh, that Texas Hold'em has. Uh, the difference is, is in Seven Card Stud, all players who are participating in the hand must put in a compulsory ante, which is typically uh, determined by the table stakes, which will be easily posted and visible at every table at every casino. Um, then each player who has put in their ante is dealt two face down cards and then finally a last card is dealt face up. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of what that looks like. So we're going to say for example this is a five dollar ante and we're going to have four players all put in their five dollars. All right then we have uh, four players being dealt two cards face down and one card face up. The first bet goes to whichever player is holding the worst card. Um, in cases of ties, it then goes to which player is holding the worst suit. And in the world of suits, it goes clubs, diamonds, hearts, and then finally spades. Spades being the highest valued suit, hearts being the second highest, diamonds the third, and clubs being the least uh, powerful. So now we've moved into the second stage, which uh, this player has to make the compulsory bet. So we're going to say it's ten dollars um, is the is the terms of the opening bit. So a five dollar ante and from each player, and then this ten dollars coming from this player. So this player has now put in the ten dollars with their low card, and these players then have to look at what their down cards are and determine if they want to continue hands. So. Let's go ahead and take a look at this through a playthrough. So we're going to just reveal all our hands to the camera so that you guys can see how these players are acting and why they're taking the decisions they're taking. All right. So this player was required to make that initial bet, uh, but they happen to also be sitting on a pair of threes. Now this player is sitting on Jack, Queen, Ace, and feels very confident about the strength of those cards and is going to go ahead and follow with that $10 bet. Now, what's important is you. this is called a complete bet, where you are completing as much as they put in. Now, if you want to, of course, you're able to raise by whatever the table standards are on raises. Uh, typically, um, there is a limit. So once you have put in a raise, then the next player has to, as normal, decide if they want to call or fold against that particular raise, um, or they can even raise themselves. What's important to note about um, a game of seven card stud 
is that there is a limit on the number of raises that can occur within a single round of betting, and that is three. So, for example, if this player uh, decides to raise to 15, for example, then this player decides to raise to 20, and then this player decides to raise to 25, then this player would be stuck at the table raise of 25. They would be locked out of the potential of raising anymore. I hope that's clear. And then, so this particular player, we're gonna say, puts in 15. This particular player says, hey, I got a pair of kings, that's pretty strong. I'm gonna go ahead and raise it to 20. This player says, hey, I got a pair of nines. I don't know what those other guys have, but they probably have something better than a pair of nines. I'm gonna go ahead and fold. This particular player then has an option to either put in the other 10 that they're missing and or even raise. So they're gonna go ahead and call. And then this player right here has the last option here. They can again call or they can raise again, which would make the second, uh, I'm sorry, the final raise for the, the round. So this player, is feeling a bit loose and crazy. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna, they're gonna go ahead and raise. They're gonna put in the five that they still have to put in, matching that bet of 20, and they're gonna raise another 10, all right? So then this locks out, the, this is the third and final raise that has happened in this round of betting. So uh, one bet, two of the raises coming from this particular player and one raise coming from this particular player. So now this particular player right here who's sitting with the pair of kings can only match the last bet that was made because that was the third raise for the round and locks out anybody from making any further raises. So they feel pretty positive. They're gonna go ahead and put another $10 into the pot. So after the first round of betting, we have 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, $100 sitting in the middle of the table with these two play with three players still participating. The next stage is what's called fourth street or the second stage of betting, all right? So we then uh, deal another face up card. So these cards would be face down um, as they were before, okay? They were face down. So in this situation, this is all you would be able to see at the table would be one face up card from each player and two face down cards. So again, I deal one face up card to each player and now it becomes the player who has the highest face-up card. So this player right here with their ace of clubs, it's the highest face-up card. They are required to make the initial bet, which we established is a $10 bet. All right, They're, that's a compulsory bet that they must make. And then now this player has to decide if they would like to uh, continue playing at that particular stake. So they have to look at the what they have here. They, okay, they still have that pair of kings. No help there from the eight of diamonds. So feeling $10 is worth it, they're gonna go ahead and push $10 more in. This player right here, sitting with the queens, sitting with their pair of threes, uh, they're gonna not feel very comfortable after all that, but they're gonna feel $10 is a worthwhile bet. No raises all around. What's important to note here again is we're capped at three total raises. Um, the most you can raise is three times um, over the course of the entire round. So for example, if this had gone slightly different where uh, we have a compulsory bet coming from this player, this player raises, this player raises, this player raises the third, uh, the second raise, that would be three raises around the table, which would mean that this player would be locked in to just pay, just to cap the bet and not to raise a fourth time because there's only three allowable raises in each round of betting. The next stage is called fifth street or the third round of betting. Okay, so we're getting the fifth card. That's why it's called fifth street. This card is again dealt face up. And now it goes and starts with the player who has the best hand overall. So we have this player who has ace, queen, 10. They still have the best hand overall. Nobody's got anything better. So then they have to make that minimum bet, which is 10. Um, and then it goes around where players are allowed to make raises. Raises are typically capped at 4x table minimum. So uh, we have here, that would be a raise of uh, 40. So you could raise from 10 to 50, possibly. Again, three typically, the, every casino is only gonna allow three raises uh, for each round of betting. So 
for simplicity's sake, we're gonna go ahead and say that everybody's happy just putting 10 more dollars in. Nobody feels too confident in their hands. Nobody really wants to push harder than that. So then we can move on to Sixth Street. So every player again is dealt another card face up. And whatever player is holding the best hand, again, is the first to act and makes needs to make a compulsory bet. So here we have this player right here with ace, queen, 10, eight. That's better than this player who has king, queen, or this player who has king high. So we have this player, again, pushing in that bet. And uh, every player, again, being maxed out at 4x um, the bet and only three bets being able to made per round. So we go ahead and have every player throwing in their money because they feel confident that something was gonna, positive is gonna happen to them. So this is gonna be the final card which is gonna happen in 7th Street. So now what's gonna happen is every player that's still in the hand is gonna be dealt a fifth and final face-up card forming their community pool that they have, or sorry, their personal pool of face-up cards. So again, it goes to whichever player is holding the best hand. So we have here, uh, this player showing three hearts, but there's the best they have is king high. This player has got ace high, and this player over here uh, has king high, so they still are holding the best hand. They can go ahead and bet as normal. And depending on if they think their hands are strong enough, we're just gonna go ahead and bring this all the way to a showdown. Uh, not any major bets happening here. We're just gonna see how this plays out with these three players. So uh, after all the money is good, we go to the first player to reveal, which would be this player right here, who was the last to act. They are going to reveal their two cards and show that the best hand they were holding was a pair of queens. So queen, queen, ace, jack, 10 forms the best hand they have. Now we have this player revealing that they have a pair of kings and a pair of fours and a 10. So that's the best hand they're gonna be able to put together is a two, is two pair. And then finally this player right here reveals that they're sitting with a pair of threes and a queen, king, six. So a pair of threes is what they have. The winning hand obviously is the two pair, the kings and the fours the kings and the fours take the pot. So as you can see, this game is very similar to uh, Texas Hold'em, as in you are building your best five cards from a pool of seven. The big difference is, is the pool of five face-up cards are used by you and only you. You cannot take use of anyone else's cards except for the ones that were dealt to you. And you start seeing a hand developing a little bit differently than you do in Texas Hold'em. An important point to note is if for some reason you're playing with more than seven players uh, and you require more cards than can be dealt, for example, if you had eight players sitting at a table and you've already dealt six cards to each player, six times eight is 48 cards, there's not enough cards left in the deck to provide uh, one card to each player. So in this situation, the top card of the deck is revealed and that now becomes a community card that all players can play with. This is a very rarely seen uh, side rule to the game of seven card stud. It would require that you have eight or more players at a single table and uh, that they all seem to have stayed into the hand all the way to seventh street. Doesn't come up very often. In fact, I can't think of any situation in my life where it ever did. So that concludes this brief introduction into seven card stud. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to check out the rest of the videos on our channel. We have a number of tutorials and tips and strategy guides to various casino games. Guys, leave a comment down below. Hit that like button. Slam that subscribe button if you haven't already. It's gonna help us grow the channel and it's also gonna make sure that you don't miss any of the other updates that we're gonna be putting here in the near future. My name's Dominic. This is the All American Casino Guide reminding you, play responsibly. Floxy20 said, maybe I shouldn't react to a good hand by shouting woohoo and doing a fist bump. Yeah, there, you know, there is such a thing as misinformation though as well. Um, if you always act excited about a hand, uh, then even when you act excited because it is a good hand, players won't be able to read you because you literally are excited about every single hand. 
Um, it's been proven to be a pretty good strategy. The other alternative is to always act like you are having a terrible hand, um, but some, maybe that might be a little bit harder. Uh, that's a bit of more acting all the time.